Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'll be discussing Boris Johnson's changing angle on the collapse of our supply chain as he moves from denying that the problem exists to saying, oh yeah, yeah, of course, it's all part of the plan. We, we intended this all along, you know. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Boris Johnson gave his speech to the Tory party conference a couple of days ago. He's also been doing a few interviews, talked about one this morning. Uh, one theme that has emerged from them all is that Johnson is not going to do anything about the supply chain problems beyond telling other people that they should clear up his Brexit mess. Now, before I go through some of the, the reports, I don't want to focus too much on that, uh, in particular the, the pro-Tory media. I'll just point your attention to a poll on YouGov, one of their daily polls, and it was asking who we thought was the most responsible for resolving the current supply chain issues facing the UK. And I thought, oh God. But I was somewhat relieved to see a clear majority believing that it was Boris Johnson and the government. We shouldn't really need to be, a, it's not a question you should really need to ask, is it? If you've got a national crisis, of course it should be down to the government to deal with it. Like if there's an issue with a particular company, you could say, well, it's that company's job. Even though you still might say, but if it's not in that company's interest to deal with it, the government should still intervene. But if it's a national crisis involving thousands of businesses, of course it should be the government. But all too often with polls like this, the government somehow get the public to believe that they are blameless and that the public is responsible for these things. Not on this occasion, thank goodness. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still worrying that a fifth of the respondents so far seem to think that the private sector should be sorting it out. Even the idea that another fifth either don't know or think someone else should be, that's worrying. Because there's two ways to look at a poll result like this. First is the obvious way, which is a clear majority expect the government to resolve the issue. There we go. Uh, not that the poll is asking who's responsible. That doesn't matter. They're just asking who should fix it. Because that's what a government should be doing. Governing. That's what governing is. That means sorting out problems on a national level, whether it's their fault or not. I mean, no one's, well, I'm blaming the government, but you don't have to. In an ideal world, governments never actually create the problems for the nation, but we'd still expect them to fix the problems that occur from time to time. But the second way to look at this, and I'll be repeating this angle in the future as well, because this is what people need to consider is, where are the swing voters in this? Makes no difference if 60% of people think the government should fix it if those 60% of the people are the ones who don't vote for the Conservatives anyway. Or will do so even if they are disappointed with their performance. If, if their vote isn't for change anyway, it doesn't matter. If the target voters in the next election are actually in that group who think the private sector should be sorting it all out and the government, no, we may be buggered. But this week, Boris Johnson's tactics for distracting from the collapse of our supply chains changed again. Initially, the impacts were denied. No, it's not going to happen. You know, and I, I was reporting because I was paying attention to people who know about these things that this is happening now. And when people were pointing it out, you could see the signs if you were pointed to it. It wasn't obvious to a member of the public, but, you, but people would point it out and you go, oh, yeah. And then things became more obvious and more obvious. So, but, but to begin with, the government just denied these impacts. Once they became obvious, then they accepted that they existed, but they've got nothing to do with Brexit. When even this didn't work, they go, well, it might have something to do with Brexit, but it's still the EU's fault and we're going to be doing these things about it anyway. And then when the things they claimed would fix it didn't fix it, like issuing, I don't know, 5,000 visas for lorry drivers and getting 127, he's now moved on to saying that's all actually part of the plan. Oh, right. So, so these consequences that you initially said weren't happening are now part of a long-term plan that you absolutely expected and, in fact, intended. They're, they're all part of some long thought out plan and are quite deliberate. Yes, that's right. He likened it to a giant waking up and creaking a bit. Those jobs you're losing, the, the food prices that you're now struggling to afford, the energy bills about to rise by hundreds of pounds. That's a giant creaking, according to the prime minister. Pa only, only our prime minister could tell us that a giant is waking up and we shouldn't be worried. <laughs> Are we worried yet? If not, you're not paying attention. Either that or you are a safe distance away from the UK. Johnson's allusions to these critical shortages being part of a plan 
and that the private sector could solve it any time they want by waving a magic wand seemed to be concerning even the pro-Tory press. I mean, because that's another thing you have to look at. It's like, oh, yeah, these impacts totally expected. Yeah, it's all part of the plan. But by the way, the private sector should fix them. So do you want them or not? Yeah, yeah. But you want the private sector to fix them? Yeah, they, they should do that. All part of his plan to move on from the low-wage economy of the EU, he says. Only this is not true. Someone was pointing out in a Twitter thread that I would recommend, I'll try and link it below, I need to try and remember these things, that Germany's wages have increased in real terms consistently higher than the UK for decades of membership. It's conservative governments that you can see when we look at our data that hold ours back. All clear from the data. But this notion that by removing what he calls cheap migrant labour from the equation will force businesses to just pay more is also a fallacy for two reasons. The first is, we don't have the workers. There isn't a pot of workers somewhere in the country that's just waiting for a bit more money. You know, the, the, where wages have increased, it hasn't actually solved the shortage. Remember the Conservatives' plan went to talk about unemployment. Ah, oh, it's because the lazy beggars can't, don't want a job, so we'll cut their benefits, which they've done again this week. So you don't think they're turning down paid work to have the, the slave income of, of universal credit. No, of course people want to work. And, and you know, where you've got a job where the wages have increased to decent levels now hasn't solved the shortages still. HGV drivers' wages have been going up over summer consistently and the shortages are just as bad as they were at the start of the crisis. Paying higher wages doesn't conjure workers out of thin air. Sure, if you had some skilled people who didn't want to do a job, they were doing a less skilled job because it paid just as well. Yes, increasing the wages in that skilled job might attract some of them back, but then you've created a gap when that unskilled work, which can't be filled. But then there's the second problem, is that although a small number of companies make vast profits and can absolutely afford to pay much higher wages, most can't actually just increase their outgoings by 60 to 80% and stay afloat, because that's what's been expected. Oh yeah, you're just yeah, you're just gonna have to pay twice as much on your outgoings. You can't do it. Over time, yeah, a government with a plan can absolutely rewire our economic model to increase the real terms wage growth that we've been lacking since the Tories have been in power. But dropping our economy into the deep end with weights chained to its feet and telling it to sink or swim is not the way. Because we know what will happen, because it's already been happening, it's not speculation, businesses will just go under. I talked recently about a haulage firm in the Midlands. A haulage firm, absolutely in mad demand. It's gone bust because it couldn't keep up with the wages needed to attract the not enough drivers. Although we are desperate for haulage, there are not enough drivers to fill the vacancies for the businesses we have or had. They couldn't compete with the likes of Tesco or Amazon, so they went bust. So because they couldn't get enough workers to fill all their vacancies... They weren't able to, to honour their contracts. There are now 350 people who were working for them that are now facing redundancy. There were a good number of others that have been taken on, but 350, nowhere to go. Because that's what actually happens. For all the distractions of a few people being paid more, most are actually at risk of not earning anything. Also, if Boris Johnson really wants to encourage a high-wage economy, why doesn't he put our money where his mouth is? He's just cut the incomes of the lowest paid workers by over £1,000 a year. At a stroke, he has just sent the average income for, for the country down. Why is he not giving public sector workers pay rises as well? Why isn't he boosting the pay of those whose incomes derive from the public purse? I, uh, there's no magic money tree, you see. That's no doubt what he would say if he was asked by a journalist that asked it, which none seem to have done. But the government have an immense amount of control over public sector wages. They control the currency from which they are paid. If there's no magic money tree for the people who actually print the money, what makes them think there is from businesses? And remember, not all businesses are Amazon with deep pockets. Over 90%, in fact, over 95% of employers in the UK are just small operations that employ few people at most. They can't afford to just jack up wages overnight by 50, 60, 70, 80%. Over time, like I say, yes, you, you need to get it ready in stages. You manage it by making very wealthy individuals and corporations pay their fair share of tax. You then increase public sector pay, narrow the gap. 
and then you make sure that it never dips below the level of inflation. So in real terms, their wages either grow or remain the same. So you're never worse off. You then put gradual pressure on companies to increase their pay offer, but gradually so that they can also increase their prices to maintain their business model. But we don't have a government with a long-term plan. I'll tell you what we do have. We have a government that just wanted to leave the EU for different reasons. You know, they, they, they didn't want to be blamed for the consequences. So they just pretend that the consequences are deliberate. They tried to ignore them. They tried to pretend they didn't exist. That doesn't work now. So now they have to say it's all part of the plan. And that if we just hold on, it's all going to be brilliant in about 10 or 20 years time, whatever it is these days. But even the normally staunchly supportive media seem aghast at this. The Daily Mail reported the Prime Minister as saying that this year's Christmas would only really be better than the last year's by comparison, based on the notion that last year it didn't happen at all because of the pandemic. They reported his failures to attract enough lorry drivers with the limited visa scheme. Then the real money shot. Not just Johnson, but various members of the Cabinet are now openly attacking business. Liz Truss, the Dominic Raab Mark II, said that there were, you know, if there were shortages or price rises this Christmas, if, as, as if it's in any doubt, but she's trying to pretend it's still in doubt. If there are shortages or price rises in Christmas, it will be the fault of business, she said. The Conservatives have always profited from blaming others for their mess, of course. They've, they've done it for centuries, really. But this time, they're not picking on small, marginalised groups of people who don't vote Tory anyway. They're actually blaming their bread and butter. Now, I don't know whether this is because... Um, they are never further ahead. Of, of, they just think about the end of the week and that's it. They don't bother thinking further than that. Or because they are so supremely confident that these people just carry on voting Conservative rather than Labour that they feel they can insult whomever they wish now. Oh, you don't like the fact we're blaming you. What are you going to do about it? Vote someone else. Oh, yeah, you're going to vote Labour, are you? No need to keep anybody on side if they can provide a, a useful target for their culture wars. But what it again shows is that the government and not plan on doing anything to alleviate the supply problems. They've had a little period of pretending to do something about it. That's ended now. That's all gone. The shortages are now at once both the government's plan all along, as well as the fault of businesses. That's their double line now. And nowhere between that double line is there the government doing anything. In the meantime, our food producers are producing less, and we are having to import more. Jobs will be lost to British farming, because we are being less productive, of course, that's what that means. And jobs will be generated in the EU because they will need to be more productive to meet our greater demand as well as the rest of their customers for their goods. And what is this other than Brexit causing jobs to be lost from Britain and sent to the EU? And we'll see the same across our economy. Although I'll be talking more about the food industry tomorrow. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.